and welcome back to Epic Arms. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the new Stevens 334. So, if this looks familiar, that's because it should. Just a few weeks ago, we reviewed the ATA Arms Turka. Now, they are the same rifle. They're made in the same factory, it's just that Stevens told ATA to make them rifles under the Stevens name and calling it the Stevens 334. So the Stevens 334 is competing for the best budget kind of rifle. So at the same price point as the Savage, same price point as the Mossberg, so it's really a race to the bottom. Well, what's funny is Stevens 334 is kind of competing for the same spot that the Savage Axis is. So it's kind of quite interesting. So let's get started with the price point. In Canada, the Stevens 334 retails for $549 for the plastic version or $680 for the wood version. In the US, the plastic version is $320 and the wood version is $430. Now, just comparatively speaking, in the U.S., uh, the cheapest Axis is going for around $350 to $400. So, like, it's right at the same price point. So, you can get this only chambered in 308, 243, and 6.5. Now, as an introductory rifle, that makes a lot of sense. Those are the most popular cartridges. I mean, I'm not sure, quite so sure about 243, but 6.5 and 308 are absolutely going to be your most popular cartridges. And this rifle weighs 7.6 pounds. So, it's a fairly light hunting rifle starting with the barrel so this is a button rifled barrel for uh so the stevens you're only going to find them with a 22 inch barrel for the turka version you can get them in between 18.5 and 24 inches now what's quite interesting at least for canadians is i saw the turka and actually i bought the turka in 2023 a little bit earlier in 2023 now as i saw the release of the stevens 334 i stopped seeing um any ATA Turkas in stock in Canada. So my thoughts is they've completely stopped production on the Turkas and they're 100% focusing on the Stevens right now. Likely due to far more demand because Savage Stevens is able to push a lot more marketing. What's the most important part for these rifles? Well, obviously it's gonna be accuracy and then reliability. So let's get started with the accuracy portion. So we tried nine different brands of ammunition. We did three shots each. And the average for the nine different brands was 1.09 inches at 100 yards. Now that is an excellent average for a bolt action rifle. And the fact that it's one of the most budget bolt actions out there, this is, this is really hard to beat. This is really amazing that the fact that they can do this good an accuracy out of such a cheap rifle. If ATA arms or I guess, well, you know, Stevens or ATA can do a precision rifle, I guess more so ATA arms. I would have very high expectations for that rifle as well. Now, uh, the ATA, just so you guys know, because it's considerably like the same rifle, we might as well just say it is, um, the accuracy was really, really good as well. Our average is 1.26 and our best was 0 0.63. So really, really good uh, accuracy out of the ATA. And the best out of the Stevens was 0 0.69. So, so very good consistency between both of these rifles. And that's something that we frequently as reviewers don't get to see is more than one sample. Now the fact that, I mean, they're different brands but the same gun is kind of neat. Uh, but I get to review two guns to see like, what is their quality can kind of control like? What is it like in terms of reliability, accuracy? Because if I buy one, like I reviewed the Mossberg uh, Patriot and it did really, really well for accuracy. I think we got a half MOA group, but most of the other reviews on the Mossberg Patriot were pretty bad that other people have produced. So it's a lot about uh, a small sample size of one that I get. So the fact that I get to check out two really gives us a better idea of just how good these are. So let's look at our worst and work our way to the best. So uh, we tried the Barnes Vortex LR 127 grain LRXBT, and this was 2.08 inches. This was our worst group that we have seen with this rifle. And for a worst group, I mean, heck, I guess two inches ain't so bad. You'll still get your deer at 100 yards. Next is the Barnes Vortex TTS XBT 120 grain 1.41 inches. The Hornady 147 grain ELD 1.3 inches. The Barnes Precision Match 140 grain OTM BT 1.05 inches. So right away here, we're already at like MOA. Well, hair above. 
The Nosler match, 140 grain hollow point boat tail, 1.05 again. Hornady, 140 grain ELD, 0 0.84. So we're sub M away and going strong. Hornady, 120 grain ELD, 0 0.74. Federal Burger Hunter 135 grain 0 0.70. Now I rarely, rarely ever get very good groups out of the Federal uh, Match Ammunition, or even Federal Hunting Ammunition. It's just not usually the case. So 0 0.7 inches is pretty darn good. Cellier and Bellot 142 grain hollow point boat tail 0 0.69, which was our very best group for the uh, Stevens 334. Now just for the fun of it, let's just see what our best was with the Turka. 120 grain Hornady ELDMs, 0.63. So for accuracy, it's absolutely an accurate rifle. Now in the precision part of this video, when we were testing different brands of match ammunition, we were using the Discovery ED PRS 5 to 25 by 56. Now while it's not a hunting rifle scope, it is absolutely a precision rifle scope. So if you do anything like PRS or you want to get into rimfire PRS, this is an excellent, excellent optic to use. Uh, for that purpose. And it's actually what I've been using uh, for NRL 22 style competitions here in Canada. And if you want to pick one up, you can find them at cdnprecision.com, which is my website. And in terms of reliability, feeding, extraction, ejection, this rifle has been 100% reliable. We have never had any feeding issues, any extraction issues, um, any ejection issues. The only complaint I can really say is just how unsmooth this bolt is. Now look at that. I'm applying finger pressure and it doesn't really feel like always going in quite smoothly. Now that's not always the case because if you spent a little more, you bought the walnut version, which the walnut version typically comes with, I mean look at this. This thing is just gliding. It comes with a stainless steel bolt. Why they opted with a kind of coated or whatever coated bolt on the the plastic version is kind of beyond me because you put this in here and right away we see a massive, you know, it's much, much better. It's as much, much smoother. So in my opinion, they should have just thrown stainless bolts on both of these guns and people's experience with this rifle will be much better because this is the, the diff night and day difference. This is what would put this light years ahead of the Savage Axis 2 or just kind of putting it sort of on par. So. Yeah, in my opinion, they should have just thrown these in there. So the action is a 60 degree bolt throw. It's got a larger bolt knob and it's got a three lug bolt design, which is gonna make it so it's a little bit quicker to cycle the action. Now, uh, in terms of safety, we have a three position safety, exactly the same as the ATA Turka. Now the bolt release is a little bit different on the, I guess, Stevens, if we go with this bolt, it is a bit of a nuisance to kind of put in and take out. Just because, I mean, I don't know why. Maybe just the coating, but it's just always a little bit tougher to get this one in compared to the stainless version. The bolt release is on the left side as we typically see. Also, one other important part to mention, on this action it comes from the factory with a Picatinny rail which a lot of the time other companies will just leave you without one or put a two-piece. The fact that they include this right from the factory is a considered amount of savings and you know a full piece rail really gives you a lot of mounting options. So next is the trigger. So this is a two-stage trigger and obviously at this price point it's not going to be a very clean break. This is definitely a creepy trigger uh, and compared to the ATA Turka, this is one of the main distinctions between these two rifles, is the trigger's not supposed to be adjustable on the Stevens 334. They've actually added some kind of gunk on the adjustable little Allen screw there to prevent you from making adjustments to this trigger. Now, I did make the adjustments on the ATA Turka because it's easily adjustable, which was supposed to be adjustable between 1.76 and uh, 3.52, but it was actually adjustable between 2.25 and 4.25 with a variation of 0.15 pound um, variance between breaking weight, which is surprisingly quite consistent between breaking weights. But then again, it's a pretty creepy trigger that you are going to be experiencing on this rifle, on the ATA. Next is the stock. So on the plastic version, we have a little bit of rubber inlaid into the stock, in the grip, on the front, and on the back we have a little rubber recoil pad. Now this stock is nothing really overly special and it is not free-floated. You can't slip a piece of paper without it touching the barrel and the stock here. So 
Just keep that in mind, which is kind of surprising. Usually when a stock is not free floated, we don't tend to see good accuracy, which I mean, heck, this rifle, it doesn't care whether the stock's touching or not. It is a tack driver. Now this rifle does take magazines. The plastic version is gonna come with a three round magazine. While from the pictures on the Stevens website, if you get the wood version, it should come with a five round magazine. I'm not sure if it comes with a three and a five, but when I purchased the ATA, it did come with a three and five, which actually in most of the video of me, you know, using the rifle, I was using the five round magazine, just cause I mean, you get a few more rounds off. It's a little bit more fun. So far, I can tell you this rifle is pretty darn amazing, but how good is the warranty? So this is gonna fall under the Savage warranty, which on paper, the Savage warranty is not like amazing. Uh, I'll just read this out to you. So um, one year only, um, you must register it. It's for the original purchaser only. Um, it doesn't cover a lot of things. So it doesn't cover personal injury, property damage and or damage to firearm caused by improper maintenance, negligence provided or provide proper care and maintenance, alterations, modifications performed without written authorization from Savage Arms Department, normal wear and tear or corrosion, accidental discharge, careless handling or misuse, barrel obstructions. Now, that's from Savage, but we already know that Savage has a pretty damn amazing warranty. Uh, like they do not care who owns the rifle, they'll, you just send it in, they'll fix it and send it back. At least that's been my experience every time with Savage Warranty Service. And I mean, they have really, really good client service. Now, um, I guess just in contrast, ATA has a different warranty service. So if they're getting it made by ATA, I think this is kind of relevant. So they have a five year warranty and it's entirely dependent on kind of who's the importer for that country. So I'm really wondering how is this gonna be taken care of, you know, for Canada or even the US at this point? Because I mean, Stevage is pretty good at marketing. They're gonna get a lot of these in the country. I guess they're just gonna be taking care of it in house, I presume. But since they're not making the rifles, I mean, are they just gonna do a full on replacement or are they gonna service them in house just like they do with their Axis too? So I think this is an amazing rifle. If you are to choose between this and the Savage Axis II, Oof, they are at tight competition. Like, you got a 60 degree bolt throw on this, while on the Axis 2 you have 90 degree bolt throw. The Axis 2 has a smooth bolt, although it's a little clunky. It's much, much smoother than this Cerakoted version. But if you had to compare the stainless version with the Savage Axis, I think that's where I'd really fall more towards the Stevens 334 if it had the stainless version. Um, but otherwise, this is a fantastic rifle and a top, top, top contender for the best budget hunting rifle out there. This is absolutely an excellent value rifle, and I think it beats pretty much everything that's out there. If ATA Arms, or if ATA Arms, I say ATA Arms because they're the one making, if they come out with a precision rifle, I absolutely want to review that gun. So guys, this is an awesome rifle. I don't think you can go wrong with the Savage 334 made by ATA Arms. So thanks for watching Epic Arms. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, head on over to cdnprecision.com. That's my website. I carry some shooting tripods and shooting optics such as the Discovery ED PRS.